I received a question here from one of our members. I started to do more yoga and this led to me thinking about Jesus more. So should I stop or continue doing yoga? How should I interpret this development? I dreamt a creature came to distract me from my chanting and someone stole all my yoga stuff. But yoga keeps me stable. However, I am worried that it might block other parts. I might connect too much with the Kundalini yoga group energy. So yes, this is um, quite an interesting situation. So let's uh, analyze this step by step. So the first thing you uh, to look at is you started to do more yoga and this led to you thinking more about Jesus. This is in a way a positive development. As I said before, yoga is a very uh, good method to allow your energy to move, to start to develop new patterns and also to become more receptive for higher impulses because we let go of everything which is blocking us. So that this increased openness leads to uh, improved contact with higher powers. I think this is an, a normal thing, a normal effect of the yoga. I don't think it is necessarily a sign that yoga is uh, opposed to Christianity or that the two are at odds with each other. I would actually think that um, since also Christianity is about transformation, transformation about your sins, development of virtues, uh, that it has a lot in common with yoga. So I think it's actually a positive effect that by you performing more yoga, um, your awareness of Jesus um, is uh, strengthening. So I don't think that this is a sign you should stop doing yoga from just that aspect. Um, so about the other parts of the sign, that a creature came to distract me from my chanting. Well, chanting is indeed a practice which is a little bit different from the standard Christian practices. Um, chanting is usually done in Sanskrit. Sanskrit is a magical language. So if you know how to chant well, then in a way you are performing magic. And that also means that you're yourself taking charge over your own development, of, over the energies, because by pronouncing a mantra, you are changing things. And this can be at odds with the path of um, Christian self-development. An important part of Christian self-development is in a way that we um, surrender our own will and in a way, become one with the will of the divine, so that we act and think and want what the Creator wants us to. And chanting is, in a way, following a very different um, type of discipline. If we chant, we are basically saying, like, we will decide ourselves how we will be, how we will develop ourselves. So I would say that chanting could be at odds with the Christian path of self-development. Um, it is very much a... Uh, both the performing of, uh, of asanas and chanting, there are magical disciplines. We are using our willpower to create a change. But by doing asanas, we are in a way not very specifically, it's kind of in the middle, um, creating a new shape for ourselves. We are more or less creating possibilities for us to reshape ourselves, not necessarily deciding what our new form will be. But if we're using a mantra, then we are very much deciding what our new form will be. So that is really a step further towards the direction of, um, uh, of magic, rather than mysticism being open to the will of God. Um, so there might be a sign there that this creature distracting you from your chanting. Um, might be indicating that this is uh, this could be a problem if you want to continue combining it with Christianity. 
and you also dreamt that someone stole all your yoga stuff. Um, this is not necessarily a negative sign. Often in dreams, um, being naked or um, losing things are, um, or also being eaten are signs of transformation that you let go of, in a way, an outer shell, an illusionary shell, and that your spirit um, is, in a way, more free, more pure, um, usually signified by, by that nakedness. So also the departure of things um, can, sh can show you that, in a way, it is your essence is emerging more. Um, here I would uh, also see it as a message that in a way yoga of course has a form, there's a tradition, uh, mantras are a form of that tradition, also um, having a certain series of postures or doing postures in a specific way or for a specific amount of time um, can also be a form of clothes, a form of restriction for your spirit. So I think that in a way the removal of your yoga implements, which may be your timer, your yoga mat, your yoga clothes, your mala for counting your uh, how many times you've chanted, um, could be indicating that you should not follow the more magical path where in a way you try to discipline yourself and by performing actions in a very specific way you know you will get those very specific results but rather follow a more inspired path of, uh, of self-development, of trying to be also inspired as to what exercises you should be doing, how long you should be doing. And maybe also your mantras can be a part of that if you're inspired or led to do them. But maybe you should not follow um, in a way the, the letter of the law because as I discussed in the previous video, the letter of the law is more knowledge-based discipline. And that is actually a lower vibration than the Christ vibration. So it could be that if you're trying to follow all the rules and follow the system and use the system, you're in a way holding yourself back from using the heart more and going more along with the Christ impulse. If all is well, then Actually, the knowledge impulse should support the Christ impulse, but it also should be uh, subservient to the Christ impulse, not dominant over the Christ impulse. So, yoga keeps me stable, you write. That is indeed what it is supposed to do. It's very much a knowledge and discipline based system. And if you indeed apply the technique uh, correctly, then you should always be able to get the same result. And so I would think that you are a very skilled yoga practitioner if you indeed benefit from yoga by having a lot of stability and being able to put yourself in the state you want to be in. It's a fantastic tool. So I think that is very good. Uh, stability also has a downside, as I just explained that it is a magical discipline forcing yourself into a certain state which maybe according to your own experience or your own ego is very pleasurable but which might not be uh, what a higher power or your spirit um, needs for you or is beneficial for your development. So that you are worried that it might block other paths this is definitely a risk, a danger. Um, ultimately, we reach um, higher states like enlightenment or uh, salvation either through the heart or through the head. Um, so other disciplines like, for instance, um, the, uh, uh, the practice of yoga or the, um, the practice of uh, uh, karma yoga, uh, so sorry, the practice of the, the Raja Yoga I meant with the first one, um, or the practice of uh, Karma Yoga, they are in a way creating very positive conditions, but the ultimate transformation, the final steps you have in your religious development, becoming either enlightened or even becoming one with the Supreme Being, they happen through Jnana Yoga, like having a mind which is 
encompassing the whole um, and therefore can accept everything, be free from everything and be uh, pure. Or by uh, Bhakti Yoga, which is following the heart, which allows you to become part um, of greater things by surrendering to them, by opening up to them, by accepting their radiance and allowing yourself to be transformed. And that way also by surrendering, in a way, your imperfections. Um, so these two parts are the true parts, you could say. And Karma Yoga and Raja Yoga are, um, in a way, helping you to make these final steps. If your spirit wants to make the final step using the, the Bhakti process, rather than the Jnana process, then it could be that in a way you find yourself blocked by trying to develop your meditation and awareness of higher states in the yoga method rather than the more uh, bhakti method and with yoga method here again I mean the Raja yoga method. So it could be that your uh, the Christ impulse, the thoughts of Jesus you're experiencing is a message from your own spirit that you want to achieve these higher states of awareness by that use of the heart rather than by use of meditation, concentration uh, and abstinence. Um, what you say is that you also feel that you might connect too much with the Kundalini energy in the yoga group. Um, again, like working with Kundalini is a very magical practice and yes, it can really accelerate your spiritual development. It can strengthen uh, certain chakras which are uh, deficient in their development. So again, it's a fantastic tool, as I think is also the the, uh, the asanas are a fantastic tool. Um, but it's also a tool which, of course, can be used as part of uh, just a system. Uh, then you're in in a way also in the cosmos of obedience and this might not be a natural cosmos for you following the laws, following the rules. It might be that you're more attracted to a cosmos of freedom or a cosmos of love and that those things like either your desires uh, to be free to develop yourself should inspire your working with the Kundalini energy. Um, or your love should inspire your working with the Kundalini energy. If you're inspired by love, ultimately it is your um, desire to manifest your love in the world around you, which will yeah, create a need for certain powers or certain insights. And out of that need, you will have the desire to develop those insights so you can express your love to others. So then you will also work with Kundalini energy, but guided by a very different principle. And if you're guided by desire, like you want to develop certain powers, certain talents, certain insights, it's also again a different principle which is guiding your work with the Kundalini energy. So I do not feel that Kundalini energy in itself is a problem. Uh, it's a natural part of our development. I think maybe how you access it could be, uh, could be an issue. So I hope that uh, this will have uh, shed some light on your situation and will help you to move forward. Thank you for uh, the willingness to share this question publicly. I think there are many others who are uh, struggling with similar issues.